So welcome to today's video. I made two different sizes of a DIY raised bed garden planter. The larger one will actually be going into the garden where I will be planting veggies in. And the smaller ones I have dedicated for flowers and they will be going into a little flower area on some dry stacked raised bricks. The materials I used for this project were some reclaimed cedar boards and those tend to rot pretty quickly. So the ones that I have dedicated for flowers, I'm going to put a little weather stripping along the inside and then give it a bottom since it is raised up off the ground quite Quite a bit. Now I'm not going to be doing this to the larger ones because the tape that I will be using is called Weathermate and I don't know what kind of chemicals is in the mastic on the backing of that tape. So that is why I will only be weatherproofing the inside of the flower planters. When you are putting a bottom on any sort of raised planter bed, you need to have two different materials. One, you need something like a landscape fabric that will hold all of the soil in. And then you also need something a little bit sturdier like a rabbit hutch mesh or a chicken wire that can hold all of the weight of your soil and your plants. If you like videos like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join the Whitney fam. Ring that little notification bell so you can get notified every time I make a video on DIYs, thrift flips, upcycles, home renovation, and home product review. Okay, let's hop into it. This is the Weathermate flashing tape I picked up at the thrift store for $3. You could also use a plastic garbage bag, Visqueen, Grace's ice and water shield, or even metal flashing tape. Some scissors to cut your tape in landscape fabric, a staple gun and some extra staples, and some wire cutters. You could use chicken wire, but I would try to find something that has a smaller gauge square like this. Here is what one of my raised beds look like. Now, if you're going to be setting your planter on the ground, you don't need to make a little screen for the bottom. But since I have this set on plywood and on top of bricks, I don't want to fill this whole thing with dirt because that's a lot of dirt. And wet dirt will seep through these courses because I don't have them mortared in. When you go to put this together, all you need to do is attach two sides together with some galvanized screws here. Then make sure you have some screws in here attaching it to your corner piece. You could always go in with screws on this side to attach it to this corner piece as well, but this is really solid by just being attached through here. I have my corner braces attached about a half an inch down from the top, so you won't really be able to see them when I have dirt in here. Flip this over and work from the bottom. We are going to start off with our flashing tape. Take a section that you can easily work with, cut it off. Remember we flip this over so this is the bottom. We're going to start at the bottom and then do another layer at the top. So if you have a layer here and a layer over it, when water comes down it'll slide right off. If you had a layer here and a layer over that, water could come in and get stuck in between this layer. Then we're going to go around the whole thing. So now we have our first layer on all around. We're going to go in with the second layer right here. So remember this is the top. We're going to come up about an inch so you don't see the blue when you're looking into the planter. and then do the second layer all the way around again. Now we have our tape all around the inside. Now it's time for a landscape fabric. So if you had a plastic garbage bag or visqueen you wanted to work with instead of using a tape like this, I'm just gonna use this plastic bag as an example. You definitely wanna use something that is thicker than this. You would cut out the size that you want. The wind got a little crazy at this point, so I'm just gonna voice over some of this. So when you have your plastic up, just take your staple gun and staple it along the top and along the bottom. Now for the landscape fabric. You can measure and cut out your fabric, but what I like to do is find the factory edge and line that up pretty nicely. Line that up and then make sure you have a relatively straight enough edge to cover the adjacent side. And then just go ahead and secure a staple in the corner and then continue stapling your way down along the factory edge side. I like to place my staples about five or six inches apart. And for the adjacent side, pull it taut and place your staples there as well. and then continue stapling around, making sure that you pull your fabric tight on all sides. If 
run out of staples to reload your staple gun, you're going to depress this here. There's a little hook right in there. Depress this and then pull this little sleeve out. Staple goes in like an upside down U. Slide those in there. Slide this back in and then depress it so this little hook catches on the inside. Then you just take your scissors and cut off the excess. You don't want to get too close to your staples or that hold will weaken, but you don't want it to be laying over the edge either. Now bring over your wire mesh and make sure that you have gloves for this part. I am repurposing this wire mesh from another project, so if you buy yours new, it won't have any kinks in it, but I'm trying to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So this is the factory edge, and this is the edge that has already been cut. Now you could go in and cut all of these off, or you could just make sure you set this back enough to where these little things aren't sticking out and they will catch you as you're walking by. Take your staple gun. Put down a few in these two corners to secure this. I like to put a staple between the two staples that are in the fabric because that will give another hold for the fabric as well. So now that I have my rabbit hutch mesh all stapled down, now is time to cut off the excess. When you get to the side where you have to cut some excess off, make sure you put your staple back in a course like this and not up here, because if you put one up here and you try to cut this off, this staple has nothing to grab onto. So make sure you put your staples in a row that still has an edge. When you're cutting, don't cut out here because it's gonna leave little pokey parts that will hurt you. You can go in and you can snip right along one of these rows. You can try to get two at once, or you can go in and just get one at a time. It's best to use one hand to hold this up while you're cutting, and then definitely make sure you wear your gloves. Now we have our wire mesh stapled on. Now just go back in, place some more staples where you think you might need some. All of these bricks are just dry stacked on top of each other. Bricks normally sit on end like this. Since I'm not mortaring these bricks, I wanted these bricks to sit flat so it would give a better, more sturdy base for my planter box itself. It is super sturdy. Just check your level as you're going and you got it. And this is what we got. We're ready to put some soil in here and get to planting. You can see a little bit of the tape peeping through up here, but once these plants get a little bit bigger, I can mulch and then this will totally be hidden. On this garden back here, I'm utilizing bricks as well. Now I just got this fence put up last week and this is more of that rabbit hutch wire. I have it attached along the inside. It kind of goes underneath the fence and then goes towards the outside. This will prevent any animals from burrowing from the outside to the inside and eating all of my veggies. So right now I'm just working on getting a really good soil mixture going back here in this garden. So I'm not going to line this since I will be growing my vegetables in here and I don't want any chemicals from either mastic for tape or plastic leaching into my food. So I know that this is not going to last me as long as the other planters, but I'll probably get a good two to five years out of this, maybe even longer. Oh, here comes some geese. Hello. Finishing this garden up is my next project and I can't wait to show you guys how it goes. I love this little tiered planter in the middle. Not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with it. Then I have another one of those large four by six planters back here. I gotta get this sod up, gotta get my bricks laid down like I have up here. So I got my work cut out for me, but it's gonna be cute. I hope you guys like this project and I will see you all in the next one.